为什么堕胎在这一次成了美国其中选举里头完全发酵，而且改变原来大家预期，因为通货膨胀，拜登的经济表现不好，人民对他的声望其实是低落的，觉得共和党一定会大胜。结果因为一个堕胎议题开始翻转，堕胎在美国有多敏感？这一次。整个川普当时任内，他任命的所谓保守派法官，他所挑选的法官里头的所谓保守，这里头最重要的一个就是堕胎，一个就是强制管制。堕胎在美国跟他们的宗教信仰息息相关，这里头最主要的是天主教的改变。事实上，在十九世纪一八八零年代的时候，天主教是容许堕胎的。甚至他在道德上可以被接受的，天主教会在那个时候容许堕胎，后来是怎么样也变成了反对堕胎。我们来看以下的历史介绍。Political parties in America have been at war over abortion for decades. Around a quarter of American women will have an abortion. It's an intensely emotive moral issue across the world. But only in America has it divided politics so deeply. You can take the baby and rip the baby out of the womb of the mother. It's not okay with me. It is her body. It is her right. It is her decision. 在堕胎议题上，人们的印象是堕胎不兼容于宗教，尤其是罗马天主教严格的反堕胎。然而，事实上，在1880年代以前，天主教并不反对堕胎。There was a time when abortions were simply a part of life in the United States. Historian Leslie Regan says up until the mid 1800s, under common law, abortions were legal and widely practiced. They were only illegal after quickening, a term used to describe when a pregnant woman could feel the fetus moving. What we would think of as early abortions、uh, was common, and it was called restoration of the menses. Abortion was not.、Uh, Immoral or illegal until after quickening. So it's the woman herself who recognizes pregnancy and that life has begun. In her book, When Abortion Was a Crime, Regan says not even the Catholic Church believed life existed before that. Up until the mid 1800s, abortion drugs were a booming business. Those who wanted to regulate that business were mainly worried about poisoning. Not as Regan notes, moral, religious, or political issues. 然后这群人出现 In 1847, a group of white men formed the American Medical Association. They pushed for laws to make abortion illegal in an effort to put midwives like Madame Restell out of business. The effort to outlaw abortion was also driven by a growing fear of foreign non-white immigration and declining birth rates among white Protestants. It was deeply racial, tying into the fact that the nation was soon to be at war, and that there were tensions that were already building. With abolitionists saying these are horrible things that we see taking place in the antebellum South, and so they connected a racist impact to that too, saying that white women needed to use their loins and go north, south, east, and west because of the potential browning. Of America. In 1873, Congress passed the Comstock Law, which banned abortion drugs nationwide. The Comstock Law bans、uh, advertising and sending through the mail magazines and books that have anything about contraception, abortion. It is part of a law that is focused on、um, obscenity. So it equates contraception and abortion with obscenity. Between the end of the Civil War in 1910, abortion was banned in all the states except in cases where either the life of the mother or the viability of the fetus was at risk. But abortion was still practiced in secret. Late 19th century observers estimated that each year there were two million abortions, and in 1930, one fifth of recorded maternal deaths were from these unsafe, illegal procedures. Often called back alley abortions, attitudes toward abortion began to shift in the 1960s. One example: the highly publicized case of Sherry Chesson Finkbein, the host of a popular children's TV show. She feared her developing fetus was damaged as a result of taking thalidomide for morning sickness. 
She went to Sweden for an abortion because it was illegal in the United States. At the time, a Gallup poll showed 52% of Americans said she did the right thing. The push for abortion rights also became more visible and pressure was on to liberalize abortion laws. Hawaii, New York, Alaska, and Washington state were the first to legalize abortion access for women in 1970. Then in January 1973, the Supreme Court announced its landmark decision in Roe v. Wade, legalizing abortion nationwide. In a landmark ruling, the Supreme Court today legalized abortions. The Roe v. Wade ruling fueled a movement against abortion. Groups staged marches and sit-ins across the country in protest. Catholics and evangelicals and also Mormons, they fundamentally disagreed. Um, not only disagreed about theology, but, but believed they, they, each of them believed that they had the, the monopoly on religious truth. But they really are able to link themselves through abortion politics and saying that that they are linked by something called Judeo-Christian values, which the anti-abortion movement resuscitates as an idea um, in the 70s to sort of cover this idea that all Christians, of course, oppose abortion. And they always have. And of course, that was a, a manufactured idea of this movement because religious people had been very openly supporting abortion and very recently, and they knew that wasn't true. In the late 70s, 80s, and 90s, you have Republicans acknowledge the power of this voting base. The movement has been incredibly good at developing a constituency for whom no other issue matters. Not any other issue matters as much as this issue. Since that landmark case, public opinion has remained remarkably constant, with the majority saying abortion should be legal in certain cases. Yet politically, it has polarized, with both parties moving to the extremes. But it wasn't always this way. In the 70s, you could find pro-life and pro-choice people in both parties. And in fact, during the 1976 election, both presidential candidates tried very hard to distance themselves from any strong stand on abortion. So the divide was partly engineered by Paul Weirich, a right-wing strategist who, in 1979, saw a political opportunity. Evangelicals made up 29% of the population. Abortion was his ticket to win their vote. Many of them had not been voting at all and had seen politics as sort of evil, corrupt, and to some extent largely irrelevant Paul Weyrich thought that evangelicals could bring elections home for Republicans. In 1980, Republican Ronald Reagan's presidential campaign capitalized on abortion. Despite previously signing into law the most liberal abortion bill in the country, he went on to switch his view and call for abortion to be banned. With regard to abortion, there's one individual who's not being considered at all. That's the one who's being aborted. It was a crucial factor in his win. He became the sort of standard bearer for the idea that the Republican Party should oppose abortion. This vote-winning formula has shaped Republican politics ever since. President Trump, too. The baby is born, and then the doctor and the mother determine whether or not they will execute the baby. I don't think so. In the 2016 presidential election, Mr. Trump won 81% of the evangelical vote. Ultimately, it's these women, their bodies and their health, that will pay the price for the politics of abortion.